Hello everybody, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you all are doing well. I would like to talk about free will. Uh, does man have a free will? Do they Are they able to make a choice? And I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to prove in the scripture that man does have free will, that free will is biblical. That is that it is in fact in the Bible. Now there's some that teach, you know, that no one has a free will. You know, God just forces, you know, them to uh, things to happen. Some are, you know, damned to hell, and some are uh, forced to believe. Some are just forced. Uh, into salvation and that's not so because we're told to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in Acts 16 31 believe is something that we do as a condition that is for must be met for salvation if we don't believe then we have no salvation and that's all there is to it anyway let's uh, read out of Leviticus chapter 1 verse 3 if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd let him offer a male without blemish he shall, he shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord so in Leviticus here it says they you know he shall offer a burnt sacrifice of the herd let him offer a male without blemish he shall offer it of his own voluntary will so there's free will that comes into play there and also adam and eve in the garden you know they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they had they had a free will to do to choose to do that or not god didn't make them do it God didn't create, he does not create robots and make people do stuff that he, and, and, you know, and predestine some to heaven and some to hell. That's just not, that's not so. Now, there are people that think that and believe that, and they take scripture to twist it and change words, meanings of words to make it say what they want it to say. But the fact is, man has a free will Adam and Eve had a free will and you know we're not forced to do anything see the reason that man that, that, that a lot of that they say well, we have no free wills because they don't want to be accountable for their actions Man does not want to be accountable for their actions, so they'll try to say, well, we have no free will. We're just, you know, forced to do things. We have no free will. We have no say, say so in the matter. Some are just damned to hell, predestined, and some are not. Well, God's foreknowledge, he foreknew those he predestinated, predestinated to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Those who were in Christ, who were going to believe the gospel, yes, he predestined. They're predestined for heaven. They're predestinated. He knew beforehand who was going to believe and who was not going to believe. Who was going to believe on Christ and who was going to reject Christ. Joshua 24, chapter, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you, to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites which is in the land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So it says, choose this day. You know, he was saying, uh, Joshua was telling the tribes of Israel. You know, he said to choose this day whom you will serve. So they had a choice to choose. He didn't say, well, God's just going to force you and, and, you, and your puppets. You're going to be forced to, 
you just you, you just gonna serve him. You know you're not gonna have no choice in the matter. No, they had a choice. Choose means to have a choice. You have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a brain to think with. But there's people out there that actually want to uh, try to say that man has no free will. You know, they can't believe because believing would be a work to boast and choice. Let me tell you something. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that he saved me. It's not in my choice, okay? I believe because that's what we're told to do. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one who saved me. He shed his blood for me on the cross. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I know that he saved me, and I know that's what I'm, I, what I'm saved by. You know, it's not my choice or me boasting in, you know, a choice. It's in what he did for me, not what I do. It's not about me, it's about Christ. Now, some people will take the verse and say, uh, let me find it. I believe it's in John. I believe it is. Wait a moment. Well, they'll use the verse and say, I, you know, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus was saying, yeah, he did. He chose those, you know, who were going to be saved, who were going to believe. He said, I will draw all men unto me. He didn't say some, all. And I don't sit there and try to say and change it and say all doesn't really mean all. It does mean all. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, which really means world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, which means anybody, everybody, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, or eternal life. Now, you can't sit there and say that whosoever doesn't mean really whosoever. Yes, it really does mean that. For someone to say that, that's showing that they're trying to change, you know, words around to make it, they're trying to change word, words around to make it say what they want it to say. And, uh, quite frankly, you know, that's just a bunch of baloney to me, if you ask me. Because it's like cheese and say, I have a choice on what flavor ice cream I want. Do I want fudge, marble, or chocolate? Or am I going to be forced to choose between the two? No, I have a choice. I have a choice to eat what I want to eat. And just, and, you know, eat what type of ice cream I want to eat. Just so much, just as much as someone else will have a choice. You know, every man has a choice. That's all it is to it. I know people can, you know, try to say that they don't, but the fact is they do. And, you know, whosoever, though, means whosoever. That means anybody. That does not mean a certain set of people. Uh, you know, a certain set of people that, uh, that means anybody. Now, I know people, you know, will try to say, well, that really doesn't mean that. Well, we're going to see about that, what it really means. In John 3.15, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whosoever. In the Greek, it means pious. 
PAS definition including all the forms of apparently a primary word okay every the whole all manners of means okay it's talking about all that means everyone uh, okay every man everything okay understand that that's what it means now there's going to be people you can't sit there and try to and that was in the greek but see, they won't use the Greek because they'll try to change the words that on their own that won't fit in with their doctrine. But the fact is, man has a choice. Okay, God gave man a brain. God gave man free will. It is not boasting to say I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust Christ as Savior. Okay, it's not boasting. You're not boasting in your choice. But that's what they want to say. That's what a lot of the Calvinists would say. Like I said, I have nothing against them or anybody. I have something against what they teach, okay? I know what the Bible says. I believe what the Bible says. I believe all means all, and whosoever means whosoever means everybody. So don't sit there and try to say that it doesn't mean that because it does. First John 2.2, 2, Jesus died not. He was the propitiation which is a down payment for our sins, but not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Whole world. You know, so Jesus Christ died for the whole world. He didn't just die for the elect, as so many try to have people to believe. If he only died for the elect, you know, to really say that, then how do you know that you're one of the elect? That's what my question would be. Do you know that you are? And how would you know it? You know, how would you know that you're one of the elect? You know, for someone to say that, well, it just shows that it's pride and arrogance there. And they think that they're so special somehow that God just chose them to be the elect. Well, it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We trust in his finished work, that's how we're saved. If you don't believe, then there is no salvation, period. That's all it is to it. It's not no saying, Well, he just elected me. I don't know why. Well, those the elect are the whosoever wills. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water drink of the water of life freely. He who drinks of this water that I give him, as Jesus said, shall never thirst. They'll have eternal life. John 1, 29. The next day Jesus saith, excuse me, John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saying, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins, sin of the world. Okay, it didn't say taketh away the sin of the elect. You know, that's what I'm saying. That's what they do. They'll change these words around and they'll say, Well, it really doesn't mean that. Yes, it does. You just don't want to see it. You want it to fit your false theology, your doctrine. That's the problem. First John 4.10 Here in his love that we love God, but that His he loved us. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. He sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And not only our sins, the sins of the whole world. So salvation is to anyone, whosoever will, let him come. Okay, that doesn't sound, that sounds like free will to me. That doesn't sound like, well, well some people are just forced and they can't resist and they're going to believe anyway. No. Ephesians 2, 8 announces for by grace, which is on God's unmerited favor, something that I don't deserve and you don't deserve. 
that we're saved through faith in Jesus Christ. That whosoever uh, you know, it's a gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, you know, there'll be some who'll still try to argue with that. And they'll say, well, it really, that all doesn't really mean all. Yes, it really means all. All means all. You know, you can say what you want, and you can, you can change words around, but the fact is, free will is in the Bible. Free will is biblical. The concept is there. Even if the words are not there, the concept is there. Adam and Eve had a free will. God gave every man the ability, the measure of faith. And we're not regenerated before we uh, believe. There's no scripture that supports it. When you say, it says, unless you born, you know, you're born again in John three, you shall not see the kingdom of God. Born again is born again of the spirit, not of the will of the man or the will of the flesh, but the will of God. You know, God's not just going to have puppets on strings. He created just. You know, some say, well, I think I like this one, so I'm going to save them, and I'm, I'm choosing them. They're the elect, and the rest are damned to hell. No. Every man, every person has a chance to believe, hear the gospel and believe it. Whosoever will, let him come. Uh, as in Isaiah, I believe it says, you know, come ye and drink. And, and uh, who, uh, who, thir who thirsts? Uh, come, uh, you know, it's and take, you know, uh, without price. You know, you don't buy it. Salvation is a free gift. It's an invitation to salvation. You know, it's not something, and, and, and it's free will to believe it. You either receive it or you don't. Whether you're trusting in Him, you being one of the elect, is which is very prideful because then it starts to look down on others and you think you're more special than somebody else but the fact is you're not and neither am i we're all sinners all of sin comes short of the glory of god romans 3 23 we all deserve hell none of us are any better than the other but salvation, and in order to have it, we must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Without doing that, there is no salvation. It doesn't matter which way you want to slice it or cut it. You know, Calvinism, you know, teaches that their man has no free will. They're just so totally depraved that they can't believe. And really what they're saying is if you believe, you're boasting in choice, and therefore that's a work and you're not saved. No, and that's a bunch of baloney. Because we are told to believe. Read the book of John throughout that. John six forty seven. Verily I say verily I say unto you, he that believeth in me has everlasting life. First John five thirteen, these things I have written unto you that you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Because you believe, to believe is to is to believe something is being true. Is to, you know something to be true. That's what believe means. And it's not a work to believe. See the Calvinist people like that. The problem with that. Let me make this very clear, because I know people are going to comment. There's going to be some that do. I have nothing against you as Calvinists. I, I don't, but I have something against what you teach. The teaching. I do not believe it. I do not hold to any point of it. I reject all five points of it. I believe free will is biblical. Absolutely I do. And I'm not going to I'm not pulling back from it. I'm not going to step off from it. So you can comment and say what you want to say and have all whatever, thumb the video down. That's fine. That's, that's fine. But it's not going to change the fact of what God's Word says. So you want you get to play word games because you really don't believe it. And they'll say, well, God's sovereign grace will find one word in the King James Bible where it says sovereign. 
you're not going to find it in there. And not only that, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, yeah, if God wanted to, yeah, he could do anything that he wants to do. But you know what? He did choose to give man free will. When Pharaoh's heart was hardened, do you think God just forced that to happen? No, Pharaoh chose his own, isn't his own free will to do that. So, you know, God don't have people on puppets created on streams to do what, to make them do what he wants them to do and force people to love them. No one's forced to it. No one's forced to salvation. It's a free gift and invitation. You either believe it or you don't. But if you don't believe it, then you don't have eternal life. It's that simple. You can say all you want to. Well, I'm one of the elect. Why do you know you're one of the elect? You, you don't know. That's that's the problem with the Calvinists. They want to boast in their, and say, well, I'm one of the elect. And, and it's kind of, they say, is, they're saying is, is if they're saying that they're better than somebody else. They're better than other people. Well, I got news for you. You're not. You're just a sinner just like I am and, I, and everybody else and deserving of hell. You know, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we're saved, okay? We believe that he died for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. No, it's not wrong to believe. We do believe. We believe and then we're regenerated. We don't... We're not regenerated, and, and before we believe, that makes no sense. That's putting a cart before the horse, and not only that, that has it completely backwards. And that's all there is to it. You can like it or lump it. But I believe what God's Word says, not what man says. Either you're going to, it comes down to this, you're going to believe what God's Word says, or what man says. But God, as it says, let God be true and every man a liar. But the fact is, man does have free will, but the problem is, is the reason they try to get around it. They don't want to be responsible for their own actions, for we ought must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and every man shall give an account for himself. So what does that sound like to, to you? Sounds like free will to me. If there was no free will, then why would man have to give an account to himself at the judgment seat of Christ? We all must give an account before God, period. It doesn't make no difference. You can try to get your way and weasel your way around it and try to change and play word games. That's fine. You know, people might say, well, I'm a heretic. That's fine. But you know what? I'm standing on what God's word says. I'm not worried about what other people think. I know and I've read it and I know what it says. Am I saying I'm right on everything? No, I'm not. Am I saying I'm infallible? No, I'm not. But I know that man has free will. God created man with free will of brain to think. If you didn't have free will, then you could make no choices every day in your life. There'd be no choices. You couldn't make a choice. You're just either forced for to do it. And it's kind of like to say an atheist. Well, they're forced to get saved. They say, well, now i got to go to heaven. I'm, I'm, I found out I'm one of the elect. See, that doesn't make any sense at all. The fact is, free will is biblical, but people just don't want to accept it. They want to twist scriptures and change the meanings of words into what they want it to say and what they want it to mean in their own mind. And leaning on their own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. You know, this is not something I have against anybody personally, okay? I don't. I have something against the teaching. I have something against when they're trying to tell people, well, some are just predestined to heaven and some to hell. You have no say so about it. You can't believe. Uh, yeah, you can believe. If you don't believe, then you will go to hell. I mean, this, the Bible's clear about that. 
Because if you don't believe, then you have no salvation. So if you're sitting there waiting for God, is it hoping He might zap you down, zap you, and maybe you'll be one of the elect? Well, then you don't you won't you don't know if you'll be one of the elect or not. A Calvinist can't look at somebody and say Jesus Christ died for your sins and that God loves you. They can't say that because they'll say God didn't love everybody. He only died for the elect. That is baloney. Bunk. He died for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ loves everybody. God loves everybody. It doesn't whether you like it or not. Get over it. If you don't like it, get over it. Like it or lump it. If you have a problem with it, you don't have a problem with me, you have a problem with God's Word. With what God says. When John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, it means for God so loved the world, and I believe it. I don't care what anybody says. They want to change and play word games. I'm not here to play word games. Word games, I'm not here to tickle anybody's ears either. You want to get mad, but see, that's what people, they want to get mad because people speak the truth. Have I become your enemy because I dare to tell you the truth? Probably. But guess what? That's fine. I would rather offend people with the truth than to comfort them with a lie. Well, I hope this helps you all and blesses you all. And until next time, God bless and take care.